Hello and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DeTulio. And I'm Kristen Clack. The number one ranked RIT women's hockey team finished the regular season 23-1-1, earning the number one seed in the ECAC West postseason tournament for the second straight year. The top seeded Tigers hosting SUNY Potsdam in the ECAC West semifinals. Second period, RIT ahead 1 0. Jen Crawford on the breakaway, and she nets the equalizer for Potsdam, and it was 1 1 after 2. But RIT would come alive in the third period. Shorthanded, Kim Schlotman with her second goal of the day. It was 3 1 Tigers. Later in the third, RIT on the power play. Colby McCray scores her 20th on the season. Tigers scored five goals in the period and went on to defeat Potsdam 6-1. to one. What did you say during the break between the second and third period when you were tied that seemed to spark the team for the rest of the game? I don't think I can repeat most of it, but the, uh, the bottom line was, you know, we just, we, we were doing stuff to keep them close and keep them in the game and giving them a chance. And, we just want to really re re reiterate the fact that, you know, how bad do you want to play tomorrow? You know, do you want to play tomorrow or do you want to play for a championship? And if you do, then you got to come out and be the team that we know that, that you are. And uh, they did. They responded very well. So RIT moved on to the ECAC West Championship game to face their biggest rival, SUNY Plattsburgh. First period, RIT on the power play just over two minutes into the game, and Colby McRae gets the Tigers on the board with the goal as RIT led 1-0 but the Cardinals would answer in the second. Emma Rutherford scores to tie the game at one. It would stay that way until the final seconds of the period. RIT on the power play again, and this time it's Courtney Kunichika who scores with just one second remaining. RIT led two to one. And that was a big enough lead for Laura Chamberlain who stopped 26 shots on the day. RIT celebrates a second straight ECAC West Championship, 2-1 over Plattsburgh. With more on the victory, here's Emily Clark. In a 2-1 win, the RIT women's hockey team defeated rival SUNY Plattsburgh to claim the ECAC West championship title. This win will allow the Tigers a first round bid into the NCAA tournament. So you guys hadn't yet defeated Plattsburgh. How did you motivate the girls coming into this game to make sure the end result was different? Um, they were so motivated to get after this game. We talked about the weekend when we lost against them that we playoffs will go through Plattsburgh or at least have to play Plattsburgh. And so we've been ready for this game for a couple months now. And uh, you know, I just couldn't be happier just to erase that loss off our record and kind of start fresh with them and um, earn our way into a tournament. I don't know. He just wanted to make sure that we kept our nerves down and didn't really think about the past and all that. Um, I know we didn't really play our best when we played them before. So kind of he just told us to like play our game and everything would kind of work out for the best for us. I thought that our start of this game was excellent compared probably to our game last time. And I feel like we just came out like on fire and that everyone was contributing to the like to the game right away, right off the bat. And I felt that we put together three very strong periods and I felt that getting the first goal was probably one of the most important things that we did in the game. So that really helped us. Now you play on defense. Can you talk a little bit about how you guys all played together to really bring out that win today? I think that all six of us on D really uh, stepped up today and we all played like really well and I think that we were uh, controlling the puck really nicely and we were getting it out of our end and uh, we really were focusing on our breakouts and connecting those passes to get it out. Our defense today had a great game, they were blocking shots, everything, getting the puck out. Um, even if they couldn't break it out right to the winger, they were just chipping it off the glass for us so it made it really easy for us forwards um, and even us forwards coming back, back checking and all that really helped with our defense. Closing seconds, Tigers out in front. Is it going to count? Yes! Count it right now, this was a pretty low scoring, close game. Is that what you're kind of thinking is going to be the case for your games here on out? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure all the teams left are all really good ones, and I think that all the games coming up will be very close, one to two goal games. So it should be a very, it'll be tough, but it'll be good. Every time we play Plattsburgh, that's how it's been, and every game in the NCAAs is hard, and you never know how someone's going to come out and play. So every game is really tight, and you always have to play your best. Most of the playoff games are uh, low scoring, real defensive. You know, teams are uh, going to err on the side of being defensive than too aggressive, and I think you saw that today where 
Um, you know, a lot of clusters around the net. Girls were diving all over the place trying to block shots. And um, that'll be from this game for the rest of the year now. Now you guys have the automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. How are you going to make sure that end result is just what you guys really always wanted? Um, just sticking with the with what we've been doing all year, plus remembering how last year ended, and use that as the motivation of you can put a whole, whole lot of work into something, and sometimes you don't get the end result. Um, you really have to earn every every game. Nothing will be handed to you anymore. Now you're also a freshman, so this is going to be your first time going into the NCAA's. What are you expecting from the tournament? Uh, I'm I'm nervous, but I mean I'm excited. I can't wait. It'll be my first time, and I probably won't, I haven't ever experienced anything like it. I mean, it'll be tough for sure, but let's. I hope we just come out and do our best. Still ahead on Sport Zone, the Tigers eye a national championship, while the men's hockey team looks to be crowned kings of Atlantic hockey. You're watching RIT Sports Zone in high definition. Welcome back to Sports Zone. After winning the ECAC West Championship, the RIT women's hockey team earned the school's third invitation to the NCAA tournament. Where just a year ago, the Tigers fell short in their bid for a national championship, losing to Norwich in the Division III title game. <laughs> RIT hosting Concordia Moorhead in the NCAA quarterfinals at Root Arena. First period action tied at one, Concordia on the power play. Kelsey Vandergriff with a deflection in the goal. Concordia led 2-1 after one. Second period, Tigers respond as they keep it in the zone. Tanisha Hiller feeds Colby McRae for the goal to tie it at two. Third period, Tigers with the great puck movement. Courtney Kunachika finds McRae in front for her second on the day. McRae scored the hat trick to lead the Tigers to a 5-2 victory. Teamwork. <laughs> we just we don't want it, we didn't want it to be our last game, and we just went out there and tried our best, and just happened that way, and glad it did. <laughs> oh, I'm, you know, I'm so happy. You know, and everybody kind of put a big question mark on us this year coming in about uh, you know with the class that we lost last year, can you get back there? And you lost too much, and you know we have a huge character on this team, and you know I'll put this team up against anybody, and. Uh, you know, character goes a long way when you're doing the right things all the time. So it was on to the national semifinals where SUNY Plattsburgh awaited the Tigers, the longtime rivals meeting for the fourth time this season. First period off the rebound. Marissa McGarry in the right place for the putback to give RIT the early 1-0 lead to the third. Under five to play. Jenny Kistner's shot won't go, but Emma Rutherford is there to put home the rebound to tie the game at one. We go to overtime in OT. Ariane Yokoyama centers to Lindsey Greg for the game winner. RIT wins it 2-1 in overtime and advances to the national championship game. And RIT will go back to the national championship game tomorrow night. The Tigers facing Norwich in a rematch of last year's title game. First period, RIT on its third power play of the game, and they finally cash in as Christina Moss slaps one through. Her seventh goal of the year gave the Tigers a 1-0 lead. It was 1-1 in the third. Tigers with a two-on-one break. Courtney Kunachika with the pretty feed to Celeste Brown, 2-1 Tigers. Celeste Brown on the setup from Courtney Kunachika to give RIT... Later in the period, Norwich can't clear the puck and Courtney Kunachika steals it and puts home the backhander for her 20th on the year. RIT would add another and they would celebrate. The Tigers capture the national championship after winning a Division III record 28 games. Afterwards, we caught up with the champs. And the Rochester Institute of Technology Tigers will be your 2012 NCAA Division III Women's Hockey Champions. Uh, coach, your, your thoughts on this season and then just cap it off tonight with the national championship. Tell me how it feels. Uh, it's, uh, it's awesome, you know, because we can uh, 
before the game, we talked about a little bit about, uh, we're tired of talking about last year. It's about this year. In this team, it's a different team, a different character of the team. Uh, and they went out and showed it, and he, uh, you know, they left it out there. And they, we talked about being inspired, play inspired, and then uh, inspire each other. And uh, they all did that. It's an unreal feeling. I mean, yeah, I, I can't even explain the feeling right now. I mean, like cloud nine. It's just ridiculous. Uh, we knew we weren't losing. You know, it wasn't uh, wasn't an option. You know, we uh, uh, we just we wanted more. We talked about that as well, and we were doing all the little things right, all the little cliches that you talk about, all you know, blocking shots, diving in the way, getting in lanes. We did it all, and uh, you know that was the difference. Yeah, I think coming into the game, we all just wanted to battle, and then coming out of the second period, um, I know our line felt that we had something coming, we had something in the back pocket. Um, and we just kept battling, we kept beating them to lose pucks, and then chances just came, and we just capitalized when we could, and just did what we could. What has it been like going through this entire season with this women's hockey program? Oh, that's been unbelievable. I've talked about them all year long as being a, a, a real special team, a model team. Uh, they, uh, they stick together. Uh, they were not about individualism at all. Uh, they, they didn't care about who got the credit. Uh, worked hard, a lot of discipline, a lot of commitment. I am more proud than I can say. They earned this championship the old-fashioned way. They just worked hard for it. And it's wonderful to see all that hard work get rewarded. It's a great day for RIT, great day for the team, great day for the coaches. Just a great day all around. Uh, extremely proud for the girls. Um, from day one, I, I couldn't be happier coming in, uh, my first year coaching here, and uh, having known some of the girls for quite a while and growing up even playing with them. Um, just all the work that they've put into it day in and day out, it was, it was really great to see them get the outcome that they've been hoping for for so long. You've got to give it to the girls. They, they put in so much time and effort in the gym, off the ice, working out, um, coming to the rink early, staying on the ice late, um, doing all the things, watching video, preparing for the team on the road, eating the right foods, just taking care of themselves. Like they didn't, they put every inch they took out there. They earned, and I mean, all I really had to do was sit back and grow this beard. So it was pretty easy for us. <laughs> what does this championship mean to RIT women's hockey and RIT in general? Uh, I think it's just a good way to leave our mark on D3. And then um, it's just for the community and everyone, it's just, it's just a good time. And um, I don't know, I think everyone's going to remember this for a long time. Um, I've actually been following the women's team since about 1985. And uh, it's going to look really sweet hanging that banner from the new rafters. Uh, so happy for Allie, happy for her teammates, and happy for RIT. It's just sensational what's gone on here. RIT is a bit of a hockey school. And it's, you know, I think the girls made a statement winning a national championship before they hopefully move on to Division One hockey. Welcome back to Sports Zone. It's been in the works for years and just three days after becoming the first women's team to capture a national championship at RIT, Scott McDonald's program finally announced they're moving up next fall. Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, after years of dominating Division III and just days after winning a national championship, RIT announced it will elevate its women's hockey program to Division I next fall. What does the women's transition to Division I hockey mean for RIT and the program? Well, it's, it's very big. Um, a lot of people think that this is uh, strictly about women's ice hockey. It's not. Uh, what this does is it, it pairs us, pairs the women's hockey program with the men's. And, uh, and, and I, I think as a result of that, the future's unlimited. When you joined the staff, could you have envisioned all of this happening? No, I, this is my ninth year at RIT. And when I started, we were, I was at men's division three. Then we, I went to men's division one, women's division three, and now women's division one. So I don't know too many people have done all four leagues, and I don't know anybody that's done it at one school. So it's a pretty special time, you know, in my career at RIT to have have a chance to go at all four divisions. I'm running on just adrenaline right, right now and I think I need a nap just to kind of sink, like have it sink in. But from the weekend, from yesterday, my the phone didn't stop going and then today, 
and then with the news about just assuming a, a full schedule already is just, uh, yeah, it's mind blowing. The Tigers will join College Hockey America and they will be eligible to compete in the CHA playoffs right away. How exciting is it that the team will be able to play in the playoffs? Oh, that I just found that out today, so that's a complete shock. Um, you know, we were kind of talking about it before the championship here that, you know, this is our last chance for, you know, the seniors, the juniors, and possibly the sophomores at a playoff, a playoff run. So to find out now that we're eligible our first year is just a huge bonus for our team, and uh, it's certainly an extra motivation now. I think we all knew that we were going Division One, but just to be able to play playoffs is amazing, especially as a freshman, going to be able to have three years as a Division One player. It's, it's unbelievable. Beyond excited. With that announcement, um, we weren't really expecting the playoffs, too, so that kind of just put the cherry on top of it. It's really, really exciting. You said earlier that RIT was a perfect fit for this league. What do you think they are? Well, you know, again, the, the history and, and the success of the program. We, we, you know, the, they have a facility on campus. It has everything that you need uh, to grow a program at the Division I level. There is a, a commitment by the administration. There's a commitment by the school. There's a commitment by the director of athletics. There's a commitment by the president to support the move to Division I. That's huge. And when you have that, that, that can only bring one thing to both the league and the program, and that's success. Next season, the Tigers will be playing some of the best teams in the country at hockey's highest level. How do you think the team will do in Division One? I think the first few years might be a bit rocky, but I don't think we're going to set ourselves back or kind of give ourselves the, oh, we just came from D3, we're not going to do as well. Like We're definitely going to work really, really hard this offseason and get into D1 shape and be ready to outplay some of the top players in the country. I think we might get from some of the teams being like, oh yeah, you want a championship? Well, here, we're D1, like try and compete against us. But I think we'll definitely be able to handle that well. You know, we did just win a championship and like, yeah, it might be D3, but that's a pretty big accomplishment. And I think having that confidence, we'll be able to carry that through next year. It's definitely going to be the elevated game, I think. I think Division One is, the skill level's a lot higher. I mean, our team is very skilled and we, I don't think we'll have a problem, but it'll be a big adjustment. Although RIT still won't grant scholarships, the announcement will certainly be a huge boost to recruiting. With a Division Three national championship and transitioning to D1, and then they're building a new arena, what do you think this is going to do for recruitment? It's going to do leaps and bounds. I mean, really, we're going to be able to bring in such better players and be able to have such a better team. People, especially at this school with the education as high as it is, people want to be here and want to play at RIT, and it'll just help tremendously. Oh, it's huge for recruiting. You know, with the girls coming in, you need to show them. Uh, we can show them that the support of the fans in the arena that we have already, um, and that's it's a huge recruiting tool in itself. And then you throw on top of Division One name now, um, piggybacking a national championship, and then building a new arena that will be state of the art. You know, it's. Uh, it's not going to get, uh, it'll be tough, but it's not going to be as tough as it has been in the past. RIT will join Syracuse, Robert Morris, Mercyhurst, Penn State, and Lindenwood University in the CHA next fall. However, the Tigers will not be allowed to participate in the NCAA tournament until the 2014 season. At this time, RIT plans to keep their 22 other varsity sports competing at the Division III level. The RIT men's hockey team began its quest for an Atlantic Hockey Championship in an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament right here on home ice. But the Tigers faced elimination in the quarterfinals after falling to Bentley in game one of their best of three series. Game two between the Tigers and the Falcons and it was a classic. Tied at four in overtime, off the turnover. Shane Madalor though with a kick save and the rebound just misses wide. Then the Falcons with another great opportunity, but the puck goes off the post, so we go to double overtime. Less than two minutes in, Cameron Burt 
saves the day as he puts home the rebound. RIT survive 5-4 in double OT. So a trip to the AHA semifinals was on the line in game three between RIT and Bentley. Tigers got it going early. Mark Kornacki, a center hit to Adam Mitchell. It was 1-0 Tigers. Third period, Taylor McReynolds, what an effort. With the takeaway and he rifles at home, one of his two goals in the period, RIT moves on with a 3-0 victory. Take care of the puck. The Tigers advance to the AHA semifinals against Niagara, a team they were 0-6-4 against since moving to Division I. Third period, Niagara turns it over in their own zone and RIT capitalizes as freshman Matt Gorbowski scores to give the Tigers a 1-0 lead. But RIT could not hold it later in the period. Chris Lochner beat Shane Matalora to tie the game at 1, so we go to overtime. In OT, Taylor McReynolds fires one in on Chris Noonan. The puck goes up and over Noonan and just sneaks across the line for the game winner. RIT beats Niagara 2-1 in OT. So for the third straight year, RIT moved on to the AHA Finals against defending champ Air Force. First period, Falcons on the power play. Cole Gunner sneaks one by Shane Matalora to give Air Force the lead. Just over a minute later, John Cruz skates in and beats Matalora with the backhander. Air Force wins the championship again, 4-0 over RIT. For the second straight year, RIT and Air Force met in the AHA championship, and for the second straight year, goaltender Jason Torf shut out the Tigers, making 34 saves and earning the Falcons their second straight AHA championship. They got the timely goals that they needed, and we didn't get the goals that we needed, and that, and, and that was really the bottom line. You've got to get some momentum, and momentum comes from you know goals or, or some big hits, and some things like that, but we really need to score goals and we didn't get it. And, uh, um, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that, why, but uh, um, tonight I just thought it was just, uh, we weren't energized enough to get the, the second shots or the third shots or, or get to the net a little bit quicker or beat guys off the boards. We just, uh, you know, they beat us is the bottom line. No, that's frustrating. Um, I don't know, I think last year we outshot them pretty good. and. You know, we had our chances, we just didn't put them by them. And uh, this year, I mean, we came out pretty good the first 15 minutes or so. And, you know, it, we got some perimeter shots, but, uh, you know, we got to go to the net hard on that guy and, and, and look for the second uh, opportunities. And I think that's maybe where we maybe faltered a little bit in the first 15 minutes. Definitely played us well. Um, I guess, plain and simple, we just didn't click like we did uh, the night before. So, um, I don't know, not much to say about that. I'm going to be honest, it was pretty frustrating, you know, uh, I wanted to come out, uh, we, we were obviously starting and uh, I wanted to make a good impact shift and keep it going, but uh, we just couldn't get it going, I guess. And this is always the toughest time and, you know, I try and keep it short in the locker room afterwards because there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to help them uh, regardless. So you go to the Frozen Four, you're just as disappointed, I mean, uh, you feel like you've accomplished things, so no matter... Unless you've won it all, it, it never ends on, on that uh, happy note, so to speak. But uh, we've been very lucky to have great seniors here. Uh, nothing's been easy for any of them. They've all had to work hard, and, and, and some have become all-league type players, and others haven't, but they've contributed in so many other ways that it's good for other players to see that uh, you know you, there's different roles that need to be played. It's just been amazing uh, being at RIT, and the coach has given me the opportunity to, to play at the Division One level before I even committed to RIT, I didn't even know if I was going to play anymore. Um, so just thanks to them for letting me come here and, and the opportunity to play and then uh, learning a lot in my first year with uh, playing behind D-Mikes and learning a lot from him and going to the Frozen Four and taking those things that I learned in the last year and, and prolonging that into this year as well. Proud of all my uh, teammates and my coaching staff and I've had a great, uh, great time here and it's just a tough way to go out. We would have loved to uh, to beat them, but uh, they were the better team on the day, and uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. And these guys have accomplished an awful lot over their four years, and uh, and there and there's better days ahead as well. Uh, you know, we're, we'll win some more championships, and uh, 
but it, it's tough. I mean, our league is a good, good league, and uh, it's getting tougher and tougher, and uh, as, as disappointing as not winning this is, how many teams would like to be here five straight years? How many teams would have liked to have gone to a frozen four? How many, you know, uh, three championships, I think, with these guys. So, uh, you know, we're disappointed, and, and but that's because of the bar that these guys have established for the program, uh, and we're disappointed. But there was 11 other teams wanting to be in our spot uh, and, um, and have not been in that spot. So we're very fortunate. Meanwhile, three RIT seniors moved on to the pros at the end of the season. Goaltender Shane Matalora, forward Cameron Burt, and defenseman Daniel Spivak all joined teams in the East Coast Hockey League. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget you can stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us here in the zone. <laughs>